Welcome back to the Humble Horologist. Thank you for being here. My name is Anthony and I am a very humble horologist. And, um, you know, the reason I say that is, well, you know, when you compare me to people on other YouTube channels, some of the guys that I look up to and, and are my heroes in the horological universe, you know, I don't even hold a candle to those guys. So don't come here if you're wanting a review on a Rolex or a Patek Philippe or, you know, 10 different Seikos that I've worn this week. No, don't, don't do that. Just come here to just have fun and see something a little different every time. And what's so different about this week is that this is going to be my first ever official unboxing of a new watch. A friend and a subscriber, by the way, if you have not subscribed, check this out. It's been a good day, I think. It's been pretty good out here. What do you think? I think it's been a pretty good day, don't you? My hair is falling. Some people have been asking me, have they been asking you about subscribing to a YouTube channel? YouTube is a big thing. I don't know about this guy. I've heard about him. I, I, I've heard he's a really nice young man. Uh-huh. I have to admit though, I kind of think he's pretty cute. How humble do you think a man can really be when he's on YouTube all the time saying, look at me, look at me. He calls himself humble, sweetie, because he knows he's not as smart as those other men on the YouTube. Well, what about that funny name, horologist? A horologist, honey, is one who likes watches and studies time and studies watches and time and takes time to study watches and likes watches. Well, do you think we should subscribe, honey? It's not going to cost anything. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to do anything. It's going to make you upset. So it don't cost me nothing? He's not going to charge you anything. You're not going to get billed anything. He just wants you to watch him, honey. I like it when it don't cost me something. What happens if he tries to sell me something that don't want, you know, like... Scamming me into something. You know all them people that scam people nowadays. They scam them. And I tell you what, that's what a pitchfork's for. You need to just be careful with that pitchfork. So there's no obligation. All you gotta do is just sign up. Get emails. Somebody's gonna tell you that there's a great video coming on about a watch. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Sounds like I'll sign up. What about you? I'm glad you will subscribe. I'm glad you're going to. And I think that means you too. You ought to sign up. If not, I got a pitch for it. Y'all come over sometime and we'll have some sweet tea. God bless you. So yes, a friend and a subscriber sent me this watch for me to open up myself and take a look at and share with you my thoughts. I know what it's going to be. It is a San Martin, all right? I know what it's supposed to look like, but I've never seen one like this in person, and so it's going to be fun to check it out. And so I have with me on a table in front of me all the accoutrements that are necessary for doing all the, the you know, all of the little, this is how much it weighs, this is how much, what size it is, blah, 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 blah. I have a micrometer. I have a, uh, you, know, um, you know, one of these thingies to check the crystal to see if it's actually sapphire. I have a scale. I'll get to weigh it. I'll show you what the watch weighs. And if there's not enough light around, I have a brand new rechargeable flashlight that I can, you know, shine on it to make sure it's all charged up and we can look at the loom in the dark.
And I have something else. I have little bitty lens that I can attach to my phone. So when I'm doing all the videoing, like I'm doing right now on my iPhone, I have something to take macro shots with and we can look at it up close if there's any really cool detail. It's time to flip the camera around and let's open up a box. All right, well, here we are. Welcome to, again, my first unboxing of a watch. I've marked out all the uh, important stuff here that might be considered, you know, private, except that the watch did come from Rohan. Thank you so much for my friend Rohan in Austin, Texas, and to me, okay? He sent this to me to open up and to get my opinion on this watch. So I'm gonna take my trusty Kershaw knife here and let's open this very carefully at the easiest spot. Now, what you're watching, again, is my first time doing this. So the, uh, the video I'm still working on, on how to set this up. Some of you guys that do this all the time know how to do it better than me. I will learn as I'm learning on everything that I do here. And uh, let's, well, here we go. Let's try it this way. Let's see what we have in here. Sweet. Now, when a watch sends you that kind of stuff, that's neat. I don't know what you're supposed to do with that, but. You know, a little keychain type of little thing, San Martin on it. Those are some quality tools. We take out this box. There's nothing else in that one. And what do we have here? We have a white box. Did you notice that? That little thing right there? I know this is petty, but why can't all boxes have that? Instead of having to tear the thing apart, why can't you just go like that and open a box. I know this is not part of the watch review, but that's, look, let me show that again. Look, right there, the little tab. How hard was that? Okay, so this is the new San Martin case. And uh, let's see, we got, of course, in the box here, a little card where you can Take a picture of the QR code, I guess, and learn more. That's nice. Warranty card. Actually dated. The date of purchase. Isn't that nice? Now, if you're familiar with the other San Martin cases, they were the twist-off plastic. This is like, I doubt it's real leather. Could be, but I doubt it. Um, but that's nice. It's padded, green, zipper. Well, let's open it up and see what we got. Oh, look at there. That is, that's a nice little case. What do you do with cases like this when you're done with them? I mean, maybe somebody has a suggestion. Obviously, you keep it so that if you resell the watch, you put it back in there and, you know. But what do you do with a case like that if you don't, I mean, it's nice. Why wouldn't you just keep your watch in it? But you normally keep these in watch boxes for display. But that's just... This, this would keep it together. I mean, this would keep it in better shape than a lot of the watch case, uh, display cases. i just uh, be honest with you. But we'll set that aside. All right, now let's take a look at this. All right, let's get it out of the wrapping here. It's definitely definitely wrapped up where you're not going to get any fingerprints or scratching or anything during uh, transportation. All right, so now we've got the plastic off of this little beauty, and my goodness, is it a pretty watch. I have not been one that has been uh, too keen, I guess you could say, on two-tone gold and silver, stainless, whatever, watches, but this two-tone with the blue is 
I would wear this. I certainly would. Look at the sunburst effect on that dial. Look at that. As a matter of fact, the color here is the Sunray Blue, which makes complete sense when you look at that effect. I'm very impressed. Well, anyway, this is the SN017GA from San Martin. What we have here is a diver's watch, and it does have its gold and stainless steel. Now, I said gold. It's not actual gold. It's PVD. It has it on the bracelet. It has it on the crown, which is a screw-down crown, and it has it on uh, the bezel. And I, I think it's done done well. It's not really gaudy or nothing. And it has gold on the indices and the hands and on the uh, logo. So, now, what do I think about this watch so far? Well, it's definitely got all the qualities that a San Martin typically has. It is well made just by looking at it, you can tell. Uh, well, maybe you can't tell. Maybe you've never held one of these. Maybe all you've had is Pagani Design or other inexpensive watches. There's a reason why the San Martins cost a little bit more, and that is because they are made far better. There's more uh, craftsmanship, I guess, more detail that goes into them. Um, more time is spent on the making of these. The finishing of them uh, is more detailed. So. You know, that's why they cost more. But in my personal opinion, you get what you pay for. So, what do you get? Well, you get a 316L steel case and bracelet. This is a screwed link bracelet with solid end links. It has a screw down case back, which is pretty sterile, which is, well, you're not, that's not anything, you know, unspecial let's get that on Tudors and Rolexes too it has a 120 click bezel and let me uh, see if I can if you can hear this I want to hold this up to the microphone which is in front of me and see if you can get a better listen to it you hear that the feel of this bezel turning it is like it's hard to describe. It gives resistance. It's got a really nice textured, non-slippery, grippy, uh, knurling, whatever you call that. I'm humble, remember. <laughs> and uh, it, 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 it resists just enough that you can feel it. it it's, it's, I wouldn't call it well, no, the word comes to mind rubbery, but it's not rubbery like as in elastic. It's, it's, oh, it, 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 it's satisfying. <laughs> no back play, and it lines up perfectly when it's on the 12. This is a NH35 uh, Seiko, which is pretty standard. Good work, horse movement, as they say. If it ever goes down, go to any jewelry store or jeweler, watch guy, whatever. Have them pop a new, you know, don't even work on it. Just just get a new movement put in there, and that's the easiest thing to do. We'll get some close-up views of this here before too long. And has a ceramic bezel insert, which looks really nice. The color of that and the uh, dial match really nicely. And for the, uh, the loom, it has the BGW9 uh, blue color, which we'll look at that in just a second also. And it's uh, rated uh, at a 200 meter water resistance. Now, that's all pretty standard uh, if you're wanting a decent, good quality watch that you could literally take in the water with you. Now, let's check out this crown. See what that feels like. Turns smoothly. Nice, distinct little pop that comes out, you know, and it lets loose from the threading. Nice, distinct 
clicks there when you're pulling it out to uh, set the date and the time. So the the times, I mean the time, the hands turn really nicely. And let's push it back in to pull out and set the date. Well, we won't do that. Let's just pull it back out this way. Oh, well, did it anyway. All right, let's push it in, see how well it threads in. Now it's got a little resistance because it's the spring, I guess you could say, inside. But once you get it, once you get it threaded, it goes on there real nice and tight, and you don't have to feel like it's any wobbly. It's good and secure. All right, what else can we say about this? Take a look at the clasp. This is a very, very well-made clasp. No joke. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six micro adjustments. Then you've got the double pusher here for the safety clasp. It's got a good, strong feel to it. And then when you pop that open, there you go. It is a milled clasp. And uh, instead of pressed, this is a very solid, solid click. Did you hear that? That's not going anywhere. Then you add this. That is a well-made man. All watches should be like that. So let's take some close-up shots of this, and let's take a look at the loom. So let's take a look at this up close now. Do some macro video. Oh my goodness, look at the brushing. I do see a little bit of, um, you see that right there on the bracelet? Right there at the lug. There's a little bit of a rough edge. You see that? Now you're not going to see that with the naked eye, but it looks like a little bit of, um, I wouldn't call it damage, but lack of finishing there at the edge. See if it's on the other side here. No, it looks good on that side. Anyway, I think he's going to change out the bracelet on this. I'm not sure, but the uh, it's not shouldn't be scratching, but it looks like when you're up right close, it could just be fingerprints. Probably just rub wiped it. All right, well, there's the brushing. You have the high polish on the side. No beveling that I can see. No chamfered edges. That would have really made it nice to a higher level. You can see the etched bezel with the uh, gold colored filling. And then of course we can see the dial. I'm going to give you up close to that. And it just decided to fall back down on me. Very well made. Very beautiful doll. And last but not least, you got that cool little shark crown. Okay, well here you have the loom. We're not in a completely dark room, but you can see the blue color of the BGW-9. How pretty is that? Woo! Doggies, that's pretty. All right, so here we are with the diamond tester we'll see it's all ready to go we'll see what we have here i would say that we have a sapphire crystal just like they promised now size according to the dimensions is supposed to be a uh, 40.5 or 41 millimeter diameter so let's see what we get here Put it in the right spot. All right, well, I got 41 right there. Close enough for me. 47.7, .7, there we go. That would be close enough to 48 for me. So let's have a 13 millimeter thickness. There 
There we go. And a 20 millimeter lug width. Yep. And that tapers on down to probably about an 18. Ah, 16. Tapers down to a 16, from a 20 to a 16. So that's pretty, pretty nice. And the clasp, an 18, well, 19, really. All right, I did look at this up. This is actual leather. So they provide to you a leather case with nice suede on the inside, a suede cushion. And this is padded, very well padded. And this watch sits in there and it keeps it safe. Not a bad deal, guys. Not a bad deal. All right, let's set it on the scale and see what we got. That's 5.7 ounces because we never talk about ounces, right? Or 164 grams. Well, all right, that's it for me. That's it for this unboxing and review. What a nice watch. I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to look at it, to hold it, to uh, get a good feel for it, and to recommend it, which I do. Uh, if you want a nice homage watch, a San Martin is a good way to go. Uh, you'll pay a little bit more than some of the other brands, but you're going to get what you pay for. And in this case, you get a lot. So thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for watching and subscribing and liking this video and sharing it. And remember, we have a, vi a video coming up where I'm going to be reviewing this watch, this vintage Vostok. And uh, we're going to be giving this away. Details to follow. If you like a cup, a mug, you can get one of these in any color you like. Just let me know. So without flipping the camera around, we'll just let Mr. Hand talk. Hello, I'm Mr. Hand. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, share, and remember, watches are replaceable. But time is not. Love you.